You know how I got land? I was homeless. And I used to fish all the time. I wasn't fishing playing, I was fishing catching fish because I drive to a rest area because I kept charcoal in my trunk. And when I got to them little grills on the side of the uh, rest area, I'd take my charcoal and I'd fry my fish. But I was always fishing somewhere illegally because I ain't own no lake or nothing. And I'd, I'd catch a string of bass, probably get six of them on there. Hey, what are you doing over here? Get away, get out of here. I pull my string up. Hey, them fish don't belong to you. Let them fish go. I got to take all them fish off the hook and throw it back in the water. He didn't know, man, that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to eat. So I can't break no law, so I got going by my business. So first thing I said, I told God, I said, when I give me some money, I'm going to buy me a piece of land. Because I just want a piece of land where can't nobody run me off. You don't want to be the leader. Go ahead and be the, the armor bearer. Because no, I promise you, armor bearer, you in the same arena that I'm in without the responsibilities that I have. You don't want this life. But if you, if you do want this life, if you do want a phenomenal life, you must have an anchor. One of my anchors is the Sabbath. Like, I don't, I don't, make, I don't get to make stuff up. It's like, yo, this is my anchor. And I'm sticking with it. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Malcolm stuck with it. Malcolm didn't leave until it was like, yo, you out. He was there, he stayed, regardless. So one of the things I want you to identify for me while you're here, especially if you're with somebody, what's your anchor? What are your non-negotiables? What are those things that you, you know, look, I, I see dudes, and again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, fellas, but I see dudes who were like, at best, you were average at high school. You were not the most likely to succeed. You weren't necessarily the most likely to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, uh, the uh, what do they call my man? What is it called? The king and queen of the school, what do they call that? Prom king, prom queen. You wasn't on that trajectory. <laughs> what you want. Is it giving you what you want when you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here? Is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. I know there's some great music that I have within me that I haven't brought out here yet. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life, and if and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. So I messed around, I got my first piece of money. I got me a check for about 115000 So first thing I did, went to Dallas, Texas, said I'm buy me some land. I found a piece of land I thought it was perfect. Had a fishing lake at the end of it because I love to fish. I said, man, this piece I'm gonna buy right here. Let me talk to somebody. I was with a real estate agent. I said, how much is this? He says, 250000 I can't afford this. He said, I got about 115. He said, I don't think you're going to be able to get it for that. But I'll make a call. So he called the guy. The guy said he would take 115 now, and I could pay him the rest later. And before I did it, I said, hey, man, let me ask you something. How much land is that? He said, oh, that's six acres. But the person that I'm with, they like me like that. The person I'm with is agape. They, I got here because they was ride or die. But you all the way out in the deep of success with no anger. You about to drown. Because now she's looking at you when you're looking at yourself like, <laughs> I do got it going on. No, you don't. Not like that, you don't. Not like that. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with the fact that you don't got it going on like that. That's a lot of responsibility. I feel sorry for the bros that got that look, that also got five, six kids with five, six different women. I feel sorry for my man, because he is that smooth, and he keep getting that kind of attention, but he don't got the kind of discipline to be with one person. So now he's screwing up a whole bunch of people's lives. That's a lot of responsibility. I don't want it. My man, Tom Duck, I, bro, have it. I promise, praise God. You walk out the female, you got it going on everywhere you go. People dropping they, I, what a responsibility. Praise God, you can have it. There are certain things that God specifically have in mind for you and only you for you and your career and your life and lifestyle to get from where it's at to where God is ultimately destined for it to be you're going to have to shed. Some access fat you're going to have to shed, some dead weight you're going to have to shed a few pounds in people in order for you to ultimately get to where you're destined to be and it's going to feel lonely, there's not going to be the same jokes. 
that's not going to feel the same as it does right now. And that's the sacrifice. The depth of your struggle, the depth of your sacrifice will determine the height of your success. The ultimate test of character molding and shaping and sacrifice is to understand that you're supposed to go off and be on your own and do your thing. Everybody here has had the experience of starting to read about a subject, think about a subject, become interested in a subject, and suddenly you started to attract into your life books, magazines, articles, conversations, people, opportunities to expand on that subject. Have you had that experience before? What you do is you create a force field, which we cannot explain scientifically, but it is a field of vibration that goes out from you and attracts back into your life everything that you need to realize your dominant goal. God got great life for you, man, but you're going to have to ask for it. And when you ask for it, you're going to have to believe it. After you believe it, you got to put your work in. Now, if you don't want to do the work that it takes to be successful, this man with his success, if you knew how hard he worked, if you knew the hours he put in, the hours his daddy put in, if you knew what it really took, it's daunting. It's days, man, where you go, whoa, what is this I'm trying to do? But you got to hang in there. See, getting what you want is up to you. How you get there, that's up to God. See, the, how, the problem with you is you're trying to figure out how to do something. Listen to this. The how-to ain't none of your business. The Bible don't tell you to figure nothing out. It say, ask, believe, and receive. Now, see, you keep going down these churches. They keep telling you this, but you ain't listening. I'm asking you to listen. You can turn your life around if you change your attitude. You change your attitude, you change your altitude. Are you, oh, come on, are you hearing me? So do me a favor. Before we leave, I need you to know what your anchor is. Because you're watching CJ and I on the outside. You're not watching. Let me tell y'all something. You are connecting with people because of money. That relationship is doomed from the start. It's a disaster. You done went in on some business stuff. Y'all done went in on some money. It's bound to disrupt. It's bound. But if you get with good people who have good intentions, who have a good heart, it's bound to blow up. What's your anchor? I had to get an anchor because I ain't had one. Well, I did have an anchor. My emotions made me make certain decisions and do things that wasn't even healthy for me. I was literally so stupid that I was living in a bad building at 16 because I was so emotional. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure y'all caught what I said. I was so emotional, so pissed, so want to do what I want to do, what I wanted to do, that I would prefer to be in a house that didn't have no water. I, I prefer not to eat on a regular basis. I prefer not to take a shower than be in my emotions than be rational. Shine trying to sit on everybody else's sun. Sometimes we have to become our own sun and ultimately end up doing our own thing Embracing the new seasons of our life. Your boat is at capacity. All of us, we all had our test. God gives us our test. It really show how strong we really are test that we don't even know. Maybe losing our parents at a young age. I may be losing somebody that affected our family, whatever it may have been that may have affected us. It may be us for you know me in a matter of years, you know, that's what has really come to going overcoming the adversity in life.